<laughs> Listen, man. I cannot comprehend what you're saying. Hi, James from Ingvid. He wants me to listen, comprehend, mm, comprehension. What is that? Well, a lot of lessons. Um, before I get started, I want to say something. This listening, this lesson is about listening comprehension. I want to work on it from a beginner standpoint to intermediate and advanced. So yes, I'm speaking slowly right now. But if you're intermediate and advanced, don't click away yet. Once I finish doing the lesson here, and in fact, part of this lesson is for you, then we're going to speed up and we'll do the second part, which will greatly benefit you in my, my belief. Um, so I, I put here beginner. This is a beginner lesson at the beginning for this first part of the lesson. But note, if you're advanced or intermediate, this can help. So if you're struggling or you're advanced and intermediate and you still don't, you're still not able to comprehend or take in information, the input, when people are speaking, pay attention. All right, so he's telling me, listen, man, because he knows that listening is only half of it. You can listen, but do you hear? <laughs> My job today is to help you with that. Why is it important? Obviously, because you want to hear what people are saying. But the other thing is, our listening, our input skills help to pr us to produce sound for speaking. And the more input you can get in that's comprehensible, that you understand, the better you will be able to speak later on, output, express yourself. So a vital lesson. Okay. So first, I'm going to say right off the bat, you need at least 250 hours to 300 hours of study, four or five hours a day for 15 weeks before you have enough input in your brain to really start to push a lot of the things I'm going to suggest. So just because you do this for two days, I'm not saying you will all of a sudden understand all of the English people. First of all, there are different dialects from different areas, so that's not going to work. Scottish does not sound the same as Australian or as American English. Heck, not even the same as some Canadian English. Okay? So we know this is going to take time, about 15 weeks. But try and follow these procedures, and you might find that you jump from beginner to intermediate and advanced in a lot faster fashion. So... The first thing I'm going to see if, if you're a beginner, and that means you don't understand, you're about 10 to 20 to maybe 30% of what you hear you understand. For me, that's a beginner. You're at the first 30%. Okay, and that's why I'm speaking so slowly. <laughs> Surprise for most of my students. Okay, you need to get materials that you can understand 90% of. You're like, that's, that's like, what? I'm like, yeah. That makes it difficult. Sorry, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, children's programs like uh, Sesame Street in Spanish or, oh, sorry, it would be in English because they speak slowly and they have really good examples. So the context is there. And you're on the internet so you can find materials where there will be something like the boy eats the apple. And you know boy, you know apple, you know eat. So, oh, okay, I just don't know article the. Okay. So you want to look for stuff that you can get 90% that you can understand. It's out there, you'll have to work. That's part of your job. Next, slow it down. So you're going to listen to this material, and I know on YouTube, and I have a video so you can check it out, where I explain how you can use YouTube to slow down videos, to make even me <laughs> sound, you know, go slower half speed to a quarter speed, right? So YouTube has that capability, Netflix does, you can slow down videos. There are even apps you can use to slow it down. And then once you slow it down, imitate the speaker. So I want you to copy me. I want you to copy me. Just like that. Imitate what they say. This is going to get your body involved. There are three types of learning. Basically, there are more than three types, but the basic three teachers are usually taught are kinesthetic, which is body, how the body moves, audio, People are better at listening. <laughs> I know it sounds obvious, but if these people who are audio people don't hear things properly, they don't understand. You can put it on paper. It's, it's not completely like that, but they have a difficult time learning. Kinesthetic people, if you let them do it, do something, write out the vocabulary, they'll understand faster than if you explain or show a picture. Audio people need to hear it. So you can put it on the paper, but they're like, say it to me. And visual people will look, okay? So what I'm trying to do here is to increase your comprehension that it's not just an audio facility. It's not just audio. 
when I'm speaking even, I'm moving my hands and you're watching that, you're watching my movements, you're listening to me and you sometimes you're moving your body with me or you're watching my body, seeing me and hearing me. All of these senses improve our comprehension, okay? So you want to imitate the speaker because even in different cultures, they move their hands differently. This will help you get more into the language because language isn't just something that comes out of our mouth. And even so, we have to move our mouth, which is physical. You hear it and we move our bodies with it, all right? Next, listen and read at the same time. Whoa, we're getting complicated. I've got you slowing it down, copying them, and reading. But I want you to read first with your own language subtitles. So if you're watching Friends, for example, if it's you know, something you can do, put it in Turkish, put it in Spanish, put it in Russian, put it in German. Yeah, put it in your language and watch it. This is what we call prepping your brain. It's like when you're going to make food at home and you cut the onions first and the tomatoes, you, cut the, you get the chicken ready, you get it ready before you cook it because it's very hard to cook and move everything at the same time. So how do we prep your brain? Because you're looking at the subtitles, the, the TV program or movie in English, and you're reading in your language, you basically know what's going on. So your brain has less of a job about trying to understand what's going on, and then it can work on the vocabulary and the grammar. And believe me, your brain is doing that even though you don't think it is. It's a marvelous machine. Keeps your heart pumping, your lungs going, and you watching this video. It's going to help to do the translation even though you're not actively doing it. Okay? Now the second time you'll listen to this, now listen with English subtitles. Once again, I want you to read it, imitate them. So now you're putting the visual, remember we talked about visual, the visual of what the word looks like with what it sounds like. Some of you read a lot, you'll go, oh, those words I know already, and you do. You've just never heard them. Or vice versa, you know the words when you say it, you go, that's what it looks like? and your brain is getting both auditory and visual. And remember, this, listen, this lesson isn't just listening, it's about comprehension. So it's going deeper in your brain that that action, that word, that sound, mean this. And you'll notice the way I'm trying to teach it to you, because you're not doing it once, but twice, your brain is going, okay, this is the concept, this is what I'm getting. We're breaking it for you, breaking it into pieces. Now also, you can also read a summary. So, not only watch it with the different subtitles, before you even get there to prep your brain even more, Netflix does this, there are summaries on the, on, in Wikipedia, there are summaries on, in, in Google. You wanna watch an Avengers movie, you put an Avengers movie, they'll put the IBDM, and it'll say this is what the movie is about, these are the characters, this is the plot, so you'll have an idea even if you've never seen it, this is what's supposed to happen. These are the main characters, so you'll have an idea one less job for your brain to do. Because it has less jobs to do, it can actually focus on the movie or television program for you. All right? So now we've done all that, what are you gonna do? Go out and watch 10 hours of Avengers, Marvel Cinematic Universe, or you know, Star Trek, or you're gonna watch, I don't know, anime? No, 20 to 30 minutes. They have found that if you study for 20 to 30 minutes and stop, you have a greater ability to keep the information you've just learned. If you go beyond that, you're really kind of making your brain tired and you're getting less and less for the longer you spend. I know some of you have deadlines and you have to do something in a short period of time, but comprehension isn't something you get just today. You study for one week and get it. I already told you 15, we uh, 15 weeks of study, breaking it down, that's five hours a day, four or five hours a day over five days a week, you'll get there. You'll get there and it will happen when it does, it'll be like magic. But I'm gonna say, you put in 15 weeks and 300 hours. There was no magic, it was just work. So in saying that, break your sessions into 20 or 30 minutes, then take a break, okay? Take a break, breaks, go for a walk, get out in nature. You need to move your body, let your brain actually relax. So, you know, a five minute walk, you come back, you'll find that you're like, oh, I'm ready. I'll do another session and it'll, you know, it's better to do that than one hour straight. You're gonna get less out of it than if you do an hour and 10 minutes, 30 minutes listening, 10 minute walk, 30 minutes listening again, you'll be fresh, you'll get more, promise you, okay? And do the material at least twice a day. So do the same thing that video you're watching, maybe watch the clip for 15 minutes with subtitles in your language, 
then watch the 15, the same 15 minutes again with subtitles in English, okay? And then that's half an hour. Maybe you wait later on in the day, you watch that same thing again. Do that. If you get 80% comprehension the first time you do it, hey, you're free, go. But if you don't, I'd do it at least twice a day and try and get 80% by doing it twice. Because the first time you might guess what we call skim, you'll get the surface, maybe you get 60% of it. And then after the second time, you're like, oh, I understand it because not only do I understand the context because I've watched it enough, but now I've picked up the words I didn't get, those grammar words and that vocabulary, and I'm putting it together in my brain and I can actually now take out individual words. But more important, I understand the message of what's being told, even if I don't understand everything. So I can learn English and maybe not understand everything you're saying to me, but I can understand what you're saying to me. And that's cool. And that's a power. So here's the cool thing about this. You should understand 90%. So what I'm saying as a beginner, we're only looking at <clears throat> adding an additional 10%, but that 10% will add up quickly. And in a 15 week period, you'll be surprised how far you can go. And if you want to see how far you can go, which I know you do, and my other advanced students are like, finally, he's going to speak normally. <laughs> You're going to come back to the second part of this lesson. We're going to do the advanced intermediate level uh, and explain and give you strategies on how to improve your comprehension and do so in a, well, a hard way or an easy way and a hard way, but it's really fun. Okay. Looking forward to seeing you on the other side. And we're back. Now, I'm going to speak a little faster, so you beginners, if you're still here, hang with me. This will be part of a comprehension exercise for you. And advanced and intermediate, some of this is going to seem very familiar. In fact, some of you are going to say, you just taught that. And I'm going, yes, I did. But I'm going to be dropping stuff that they should do that you don't have to do. And I'm going to go faster so we won't stay here as long. Got it? Good. Let's go to the board. So. Um, starting off, advanced and intermediate. For me, basically, you're going to be almost the same. You're clearly not, but these methods or methodologies will work for you both. Now, I call this the baby steps method, and I call it 3I. You're going to say, what's 3I? Well, it's immerse in input. And again, that's immerse. Put yourself, like your hand in water, in input. Input is information coming in. So we're going to flood our brains with a lot of information. As I said, in a 15-week period, uh, 250 to 300 hours, you will start, if you put yourself in that much in concentrated and more of a passive way of taking in information, you'll start to find the natural comprehension happens as the brain has enough information that it can start to do things by itself. Okay? So it's like trying to swim. Um, you can learn from a book how to swim, which is just listening. You're not going to learn how to swim. You've got to get in the water. It's going to get a bit messy. It's going to be a bit hard, but your body will figure it out. And that's what your brain is doing when you aren't really paying attention. But we're going to kill it, not kill it, but we're going to immerse it, right, in input. And we have two methods of doing it, okay? So the baby steps method, I say baby steps because this one is repeated from the front board, which is for the babies, not babies. I say baby steps method for this reason. I was joking earlier. Babies have zero comprehension. A baby does not know what a square is, what a bottle is, what time is. So everything a baby learns is by paying attention to the input it receives. And babies, if you think about it, learn rather rapidly. Within two to three years, they're not just speaking, they're walking, talking, they're doing a whole host of things, but they're becoming aware of their world. I've mentioned this in other videos, like you're not in that position. You have concepts in your head, so you don't have to start from the beginning. But we can take how babies learn and incorporate it to make a system that will help you improve your comprehension at a faster rate. At the beginning, it may seem slow, and I'm sorry, there's not much I can do about it, but as that threshold or that line of 250 hours to 300 gets closer and closer, you should start to see your ability to comprehend get quicker or faster and faster. It'll almost seem like magic, and you won't realize how much work you put in once you get to the other side. So let's go to the board, and I'm gonna show you the first one, the first step, or the first of my 3i processes, 90% comprehension. You're like, what? You just said the beginner sat to it. Yes. There's a reason for it because what you're aiming for when you're doing this is different than when we do the other side of the board. Okay. So 
you're going to look at understanding 90% of your materials. So there's not much you don't understand. You're going to prep yourself by reading it. So you're going to read a summary, quickly get a blurb. And this is on any television program. We'll say, you know, if it's about Three's Company, Jack Roper is looking for a job because he has no money. And you'll understand that's what it is. By now, if you've done the beginner material for, let's say, four or five weeks, what have you, you're going to have a, a, a large amount of comprehension. So unlike them who has to find something like a child's program, you can watch a much more complicated program. Okay, so you did the first steps and you've created a very nice base so that you can now jump faster and do more interesting work. So you're going to be looking at materials that you understand 90%. Those are usually sitcoms like Friends and that. They use basic language, you know, a few words you won't know. That's okay, but that's why we're using it. So you can get those few words. You're going to prep by a summary. You can, as I said, you can go to IB, IBDM. It's like an international movie database. You can go to Wikipedia on movies or programs. You can look at certain things like Courtney Cox. You can look and it'll say she's in this episode of this program. And you can press and that's in Wikipedia and it'll take you to give you a summary. Whew. Lots of talking to saying, you can get this. It's not that difficult. If you can watch this, pro uh, watch this video, you can find the information on the program. Next, what you're really working on because you're doing this 90% is you're working on the grammar and the vocabulary. Okay, so that's what the big difference between the beginners are and you. You're, you've got a task. You're looking at, okay, I want to get the individual words. The message is good, yes, but I want to get the structure of the language, the grammar and whatnot. Okay, now here's the benefit about this. First progression. Beginners won't experience this right away because they don't have enough. They only have 20 to 30% understanding, like, sorry, 10 to 30%. Okay. Here, you have a higher level of understanding and you're getting materials that are easy for you. So the progression is going to go very, very quickly. You're going to like this. You're going to be going, whoa, it's like I understand a lot of things because usually it's small things that we have problems with. And when we fix them, they're like ladders. They help us go to the next level. The drawback here is the limited resources because let's face it, everybody's different. Mr. E is different than me. So what I have problems with it will be different than his. So we may not be able to watch the same materials for, to get the same results. So you're going to have to work a little harder to find things to work with. That's part of what you get. But the benefit is you're going to progress quickly. The other thing is it can be boring. You already know 90%. You're like, well, I know all of this. I'm looking for like 10, 15 words I don't know. Of course, you're not going to watch every program to look for those words. You're going to put a program appropriate to your level. Um, I'm going to give you a list, not of movies, but of concepts you can look for. Look for slapstick comedy, you know, some bleh, they bump into walls, <laughs> right? Um, if you're in the lower, lower tier, mint intermediate, look for action movies. Um, <clears throat> they use simpler language and they make, they gesticulate, which means move their bodies in ways to give you an understanding of what they're doing. So your brain has less to work, less to work on and more to work with. Okay. So in doing that, that will help you get more information out of it because really what we're doing is we're going for the grammar structure and the vocabulary and we can strengthen our weaker vocabulary and our understanding of how grammar translates meaning. That's this part here. Okay, cool. It's a, as I said, you'll get fast progress. The difficulty you'll find is in finding resources for it. And that you might find that a lot of the programs are at a level that you're more sophisticated than. Uh, like Friends is a nice program, but it's not the most sophisticated program. Mm, that's okay. We're here to learn. Now, if we want to say, okay, you know what? Uh, I don't mind working hard because this is an easier method, right? It's easy. You know most of it. You know, I don't mind working hard. Just make it interesting. I'm thinking this is for you. And for most people, I'd say it's the best way to go. Because if you're not interested in what you're learning, you don't really learn very well. Um, I went to you know, a school in Ontario. We have been given at least nine years of French. And all I can say is Le Chat Noir. I hated it. It was boring. I learned more Spanish in like three months by studying on my own than I did in nine years of formal education. So I did it later on in life. So does that make me stupid? No. Does it make my teachers bad? No. Was the material all bad? No. Did I like anything I was doing? No. 
had they put comic books or did something with Star Trek or something, I would have been, I would be speaking the French language like no problem, yeah. But I wasn't given material that interested me, so I didn't pay attention to it. I had a reason to learn Spanish. I wanted to go there. I liked the food. I met some wonderful people. I was interested in learning so I could communicate with them. And when I was taking it in school, it was just a course I was told to take. No choice. So that's similar to this. That's why I said it could be boring, but there'll be lots of progress because you've already started and you're interested in the language. If you want to challenge yourself, find materials that is only 20 or 30% that you may know. This might be podcasts because they're not scripted and they don't really care that everybody loves them. Something like Everyone Loves Raymond or Friends or Frasier or I, I don't know what else is on television these days. Uh, Blue Bloods. Um, uh, what's his name? Sherlock Holmes. Those programs are geared for mass appeal. They want a mass audience. But a podcast by Joe Rogan or something like that, he doesn't really care if everybody loves him. He's saying, these are my guests, this is what we're going to talk about, and that's what you're there for. So you may find they talk about subjects in a specialized way you just don't have the words for. You may only have 20 or 30% comprehension in the listing materials, but your superpower, your advantage is you're interested, so your brain's going to pay attention and pick up that information. Cool? All right. So you care about the, intro, the material, you're more interested in it, so you're going to learn more about it. Now, what we are looking for here is different than here. We don't really care about the grammar structures and vocabulary, although it will come up. You're seeing if you can get the, inf the basic information. You're going, okay, I want to understand what they're saying. I want to get what we call in English the gist, the idea of it. And that's really kind of cool to think that 70 to 80% of it, you don't understand the words. But you walk away going, okay, this podcast <coughs> or this program was about this. It's like, but you don't really speak that much English yet, but I understand it. Once you've got this, you'll be able to work your way backwards. And I'm going to give you a couple of techniques to help you with that. But also show you how you can combine these techniques to really master comprehension. Okay? Now, you're going to do active listening. So here we're going to get specific, and that's why I said we're going to work on our comprehension skills, even though we're not working on vocabulary. Take notes. So you're going to sit down, listen, write out what you think they're talking about. And then you can go back and, you know, use the other method to check with the vocabulary by putting subtitles on and check to see what you've got. Get active. Test yourself, right? See how long it takes you to get much. So maybe you give yourself 10 minutes, write out the, everything they say, then replay it back and check it. Or give yourself two minutes to write down as much as you can. I did that with students. And it was amazing how the less time they had, the more they were forced because they were interested in the game and winning, the better they did. Something that's for you to think about, okay? So take notes. Do activities while you listen to the material. So that I don't mean drive your car. I mean, yeah, something like take a shower. So you're taking a shower, you're listening to an English podcast, and you're trying to, you know, you're not 100% listening because I hope you clean yourself. That's more important when you're in the shower. But you got it going in the background, so you're listening going, oh, yeah, that's really funny, that joke that guy just did. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know that was happening on in the world economy. Because your attention is divided, but the brain is becoming more accustomed to, in a more casual way, taking in English so it's not so stressful. Stress is a killer. When you're stressed out, the brain doesn't work as well. But if your brain's like taking a shower, it's relaxing, and you're just listening casually to English, it'll open itself up more to absorbing it and being more comfortable in the presence of English, which is extremely powerful. And finally, play it in the background. Uh, I often tell students, play music in the background in English. Play TV in the background while you're doing anything. And when I say play it in the background, do something where you have to concentrate on it, like a puzzle or reading in your own language. So it becomes something that is a natural thing for you. Think about it. In your own country or language, it's all, your language is always around you. It causes no stress. And there are things you kind of pick up subconsciously because it, you're surrounded by it. A lot of you know how's it going or what's up. And assume some very bad English words, simply because while you were playing video games, you heard the words again and again. You didn't really know what they meant. But after a while, you go, oh, he say that word. This man get angry. Oh, this word is a bad word. I like this word. I use this. And then maybe someone explains it, but you know it elicits or it gets a response. You don't always have to go to school to learn them, right? So by having it in the background, by doing some distracted... Um, 
listening and doing some focused listening, you're going to get your brain to really focus in on the comprehension aspect. So although we're not working on vocabulary and we're not working on grammar as per se, you will pick up grammar parts. Language is <clears throat> pattern recognition. How are you? 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 After a while, how are you is the pattern recognition. How are you is how are you? And as long as you're how are you, you're going to understand it no matter who says it to you. It's that pattern recognition. By doing this method over here, okay, the second part, you're getting pattern recognition. So you're going to start to see how grammar goes together. How are you? You're going to get the R is the verb to be. Maybe you don't know that, but how is she? How are you? These words seem to have something to do with being. And the verb do has to do with action. I just don't notice the pattern. You won't notice it. Your subconscious will notice it. You still should do some study on that. I'll get back to that in a second. Now, the benefits of this is there's lots of material. At 20-30% comprehension, the world is your oyster. Watch what you want to watch, right? Watch sports, watch business, watch news, because, well, if you like it, you don't have to know that much to actually study it. Second benefit, it's fun, it's interesting. Maybe you want to learn another thing and you're like, hey, I just want to learn about cameras. Go ahead, <laughs> you don't have to learn as much. Your interest will help you draw out the meaning which will help you in casual conversation, all right, later on. What's harder about it? It is going to be harder and slower. Look at what the activities are, taking notes, doing it in the background. And this is what I said, the three I, you're immersing yourself, so you'll spend hours at a time in a day on your language, learning English, right? But it'll be worth it, and it'll be more fun. Now, the best, honestly, because I know you were going, well, you haven't told me how to do grammar and vocabulary. Dun, da, 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 da. Use both. What? That's right. Use both. This is for fun. Once you've got this down and you're watching a program, you're like, hey, I, I got this program, got the meeting, then use this one. <laughs> what? Yeah, go backwards. Then take your time. You've already prepped it by watching it. Work on the grammar and the vocabulary. And that's when you're going to get your fast progression. So between the two of them, you're going to notice steady steps up in the evolution of your English language. Cool? We do try. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of hints that will be, uh, that will help facilitate or help you learn a little faster. Things that you will notice in the English language, we have a lot of these, and they're called reductions or linking words. Um, I've done a video where I did one with like, how's it going and showing how words get linked together, and I've done ones with reductions. So an example for a reduction is, I don't know im, I don't know er. Now, most of you are going, what is im and er? I've never seen these words. Well, in English, a lot of times we drop the h before for pronouns. We drop those pronouns and we just say, instead of I don't know him, I go, I don't know him, I don't know him, I don't know her, I don't know her. So this I don't know her, you might get this, and then this all of a sudden just drops off. So you want to look for reductions. So that's one example of the pronouns him and her. The h often gets dropped off. Okay. Another thing you can look for are linked words. So how is it going become, how's it going? How's it going? So we put the is and the it's together, link them together. So it's not so much a reduction as is putting words to be, you know, making three words into one. In a reduction, we're just taking a word and dropping a sound because it makes it easier to say. In the linking portion, we're actually taking two or three words and putting them together. And sometimes you actually have both happening in the same sentence. So, how's it going is how is it going? What did you do? What did you do? All right? So we linked it. What did you? Ju becomes ja. What did you do? And there's actually here a reduction and a linking to make two words into one, which makes it very difficult, and I understand why people get upset, to learn English. When we are looking for these things, I would like you to make sure you pause. If you get to a video or a movie, you're watching it and you see it, pause it and imitate it. So replay it again. What did you do? And he says it and you go, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? By vocalizing it and using your mouth and forcing that, you're actually teaching your brain to understand what you're hearing. I know it's strange, but it's sort of like, when you see a friend talking and there's a gloss there, but you can read their lips and he goes, come on in, we're waiting for you. You can't hear the words, so what are you looking at? Mm -hmm. You're watching his mouth. 
because you've seen that movement a million times, so you can basically figure it out. You're going to do the same in English, but you're going to do it physically by moving your mouth. Like, what did you do? What did you do? Once you've got that down, you're going to notice you hear it all the time. Okay? So, these are two things you can work on, right? When you're looking for, when we're looking for vocabulary and whatnot and grammar, we can look here and see how the rules are broken. I've given you two methods. What I want you really to do is combine them. But they're two different methods, so it depends how you feel. So I'm giving you an option. If like, oh man, I don't want to study English today, do this one. It's going to be easier. You find something easy to do. You work on basic vocabulary and grammar that you can look at and break it down like it's math. Okay? It might be a bit boring, but it's going to be easy. You feel like you want to get challenged? Dun, 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 dun. You want to get in there? Do this one. You can pick something like, I really want to learn about MMA this week. I'm going to watch a, a podcast, or I'm going, to, so I'm going to watch a fight, listen to them describe it. Your comprehension may be only 20, 10, you know, 20, 30%, but getting the message of what's going on, how's, who's winning, who's losing, how are things turning around, being able to walk away and going, I maybe didn't know every word, but I knew what was happening is really cool. We're going to watch out for reductions. We're going to walk up for linked words. That will get you to go deep into the English and get into comprehension of it because you're going to go deep and your brain will do the work behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write in the comments your favorite movie or TV program that you love to watch to study English with and why. Because everybody has a reason and it's that reason that may help somebody else. So everybody who gives, so for everyone you write TV program and why, you're going to get 1,000 points. Cool. So if you write two programs, you get 2,000 points, 3, 000, uh, three programs, 3,000 points. Listing wise to help, not it's good for us to get to know you, but it's actually better for helping others, okay? So I want to say thank you once again for taking the time because I know it's a long video, but I hope this is very instructive and helps you. And if you do find it helps you, please give it a thumbs up. Um, it helps. It helps me be able to produce more videos. And what I mean by that is that YouTube pushes a bit, don't usually explain this, but they push it a bit so that more people get to see it, so I get to help more people. Uh, and if you've noticed that you've watched more than two or three, my dad would say this, if you have to borrow a tool three times, go buy your own tool. So if you've watched at least three of my videos, you should be subscribed already. I'm not saying you have to, but think about it. You keep coming back to the resource, why not subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll get all of my videos. Now, that's not so bad. And after I said thank you, I would like you to go to, oh, but before I make you go there, I would like you to hear my quote of the day. It goes with the video. The world is giving you answers every day or each day. Learn to listen. That's what the lesson was about. And now you have the skills to do so. So before I take off, I would like you to go to www.ing as in English vid as in video.com, ingvid.com, and you can go do, well, there won't be a quiz for this, but uh, you can go see other videos I've done where there are quizzes and more information on listening comprehension, okay? So, check if there's anything linked up there, and it's been a pleasure. See you soon.